Hello everyone. I wanted to make a quick video about Reaper. Uh, I talked a little bit on the chat this week about that and I thought there were some cool things you guys can see. Um, first of all, uh, I found this pretty cool mastering website online uh, to start out with. Um, we'll cut straight to it so the video is short, uh, shorter and doesn't waste your time hopefully. Um, for those of you interested in Reaper, uh, it's a very affordable DAW and does a lot of things. And I am not a Pro Tools user. I came from Logic Pro, so my extent, my um, experience runs from from that. Um, but Reaper obviously is available in many different versions, including Linux, which I don't really know much about. Uh, purchasing Reaper is actually really affordable and. Uh, you spend $60, and what Reaper asks is that if you make, I believe somewhere they say, if you make more than $20,000 a year using Reaper, they ask you to buy a commercial license, which is only $225. But for $60, you can get started with Reaper. So I think that's really pretty cool. After you install Reaper, there's something you need to do. And... There's a site, and I'll put a link to all these sites um, on the posting with this video so you can find them easily. Uh, this SWS extension is a bunch of plugins in Reaper that someone else has made and programmed, and they work great, and there's a lot of interesting functions through them. So I suggest that you, when you install Reaper, you download this and install this as well. If you want to do the four point editing or the source to destination editing as it's also known you have to install the SWS extensions first so let's take a quick look at Reaper um, I have loaded a basic project and in fact I used my Berkeley mastering course uh, template I made for mastering with this um, and there's a few things we can take a look at. Uh, one, I'll show you where these extensions lie. And they live in this menu here. There are a few very useful things. Um, there's a loudness plugin that when you pull it up, you can select any track or, or group of tracks and it will analyze them for loudness, which is kind of handy. It's just another way to check that out. Um, there is a Qbus generator. So if you're doing a lot of recording and you need to do uh, headphone outputs to for various musicians, you can create all that through the Qbus generator, which is I haven't used a lot, but it's very handy. It works great. Um, another thing I use frequently, there's a number of utilities for markers. And so a lot of times I'll lay down markers in a live performance and I may go back and some of them are out of order. You can reorder your markers right away and it just starts at the beginning and labels them all one to whatever your highest number is um, without moving anything, just in the order they appear. So it's pretty handy in that uh, regard if you're using that. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna give you a, there's a lot of great videos on Reaper. Um, let's talk about the whole source to destination thing because I know that's a thing that um, really only DAWs like Sequoia or Pyramix do at a much, much greater expense. So in Reaper, you have to go install yet another set of key commands. So let me go back to Chrome and I found this posting a while back. It's actually pretty old. It's from July of 2007. And this person made this set of commands. Uh, it's essentially a um, process. And you can create these yourself in Reaper as well. It requires the SWS extensions, as I said. And you download this little zip file and install it. And um, once you install it, then you can do a pretty cool thing in Reaper. So I have my project open here. I'll go to my tracks view. And I want to be able to uh, do my edits into a second timeline. Turn off my snapping. 
And so I may want to take parts of this and add it on to this timeline. So the first thing you have to do to set up that alternate timeline is you have to set up essentially another project. And there's a key command for this. And what it does is cr it creates a duplicate project of the current one minus any of the audio that's in the tracks. So I'll show you what that means. I've reset the key commands to, to be command option E. And that creates another project. Now, I'm going to um, create and save my uh, alternate project here. I'm going to save it to my desktop for now. Save. I don't want to copy the media right now. So up here at the top, you can say I have my source project. Then I have my, dem my destination project. Same layout. The new destination project has no audio. So I'm going to play a little bit of this and figure out what I want to um, edit. Okay, so I'm going to edit right here. And I don't have to split anything. I just make my selection. Then I hit my edit key command, command E, and it takes it over to the alternate timeline. I can use my bracket keys to go to the end. Then I go back to my other project, either key command or with the mouse. Now I can continue on. And let's say that I want to, to connect this phrase. And I'm going to put that next for editing purposes into my other project. Command E again, tags it on to the end. And the other cool thing it does, I'll zoom in, it creates a crossfade automatically. So I don't have to mess with that. And it's not clean right now because, well, I didn't put that much care into doing it. But I can certainly adjust that. Um, Reaper does have a pretty good crossfade editor. I can double click on my crossfade pulls up my crossfade editor. I've got different side. Uh, you can link the sides. Um, you can unlink them. You can have different uh, fades, fade ins and fade outs, and it gives you a little bit of flexibility there. So that's pretty cool. And I can set my default crossfade to be different if I want, etc. So um, there's kind of some easy things to do. And then once I get into the project, I can even adjust my crossfades a little bit more. Command and clicking goes to the next crossfade shape in the series. Anyway, so that gives you a little bit on crossfades. Um, another cool thing I like in Reaper, and I again, other DAWs probably do this, but if I have a either a Melodyne edit or a edit an RX, and I don't want to edit my entire project. You know, in Melodyne, that can take a really long time to render that into Melodyne. I may just want to put this part because my edit is in this part, or there's a noise in RX I need to take out. So I go up here to item, and you have to set this up in your preferences in Reaper, but I can open item copies in RX. So I click on that. You can open the original, but I like to open a copy and I'll show you why in just a second. So it's going to open up RX. And now I have my I have my um, audio here. Now I want to say I've got a noise in here. And I'm going to do a little spectral repair. I'm going to attenuate this. I'm going to attenuate it a lot because it's a really bad sound. And let's just say that this actually works. All right, so I just processed that. Now I want to replace that item in Reaper with my processed audio. So I go up here to the file menu and I do overwrite original file. And this is why I did not send, this is why I sent a copy to RX. So now, when I go back to Reaper, notice I've got two takes. 
Take one is my original. Take two is my RX affected copy of the take. So that's there for me to use. I can make it, I can go back to the original if it's not working well. I can send that again to RX and start on a whole new copy if I want, um, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a really handy thing that I tend to use pretty frequently. Okay, so uh, another thing we were talking about was different themes that are available in Reaper. And let's go to um, options, themes. I'm using the default theme. Um, there are some other cool themes. I don't even remember what these are. I know this white tie theme is really cool on a large monitor. It makes it look like kind of like a tape machine. I'll pull up the mixer. The mixer is really cool looking. Um, there's tons of themes on the Reaper website that you can you can pull up. There's a theme that looks just like Logic. There's a theme that looks just like Pro Tools. Um, and then you can also change your key commands. If I go to my action list, and like here's my source to destination edit command E. I use that a lot, so I made it an easy thing. If I want to change it, I can go down here. I can edit that action. I can program a new thing, whatever whatever I want. So there's, there's lots of different things I can do in there. Um, you can also uh, change the layout of your mixer strips or your tracks. Um, for instance, you know, if I want my mixer to have different uh, layouts, I can go here. So I'm looking at the mixer panel. And, you know, if I just want a basic strip, if I've got a lot of tracks or I'm recording, that's an easy way to kind of reduce your footprint a little bit. Anyway, those are some of the big things I use in Reaper. Um, I encourage you to look both on Reaper's website. If you go to the videos section, there's a guy named Kenny Joya who I think has a studio in New Jersey, has made all of these tutorial videos, and they are really super. So pretty much any topic you may come across, there's a video for. That's pretty self-explanatory, but just a ton of uh, questions answered here. There's also another blog called the Reaper blog. Oh, this was the themes uh, section. This is also on the Reaper website. So uh, it's another cool theme I pulled up. Uh, you can see a screenshot. You know, totally different theme someone made. You can make it look completely different, really customize it. Um, it's kind of handy. But there's another uh, website called the Reaper blog that I seem to have left off here. But it's very handy. This guy, another guy runs it who's not affiliated with uh, the DAW, the people that make Reaper. And he's just got tons of videos on YouTube. Every time there's an update, which happens very frequently, he posts um, a video, usually the next day, on what's new in uh, the new version of Reaper. Reaper also does a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with video. It's very easy to do video, um, very handy. Uh, software. So anyway, I hope that helps. I'm going to cut this short. Oh, one more thing. There is a spectral editor in Reaper itself, which I have not used. It came out after I purchased RX. So I don't remember where it is <laughs> even, <laughs> but I think, yeah, spectral edits, show spectrogram. You can really get in here and edit your noise also within Reaper, which is pretty cool. And like I said, I haven't done it a lot. Um, I know Mark had said you can also um, apply effects to each item. And you do that by clicking on the item. And you've got gain here. I can adjust my volume per item. If I want effects on that item, I click on effects right here. And it pulls up my effects chain for that particular item. So if I want to do something, you know, to that one thing, it's pretty easy to do that and have it affect only the, the part you want. Um, I hope that helps. I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time.
Uh, if there's anything else that you don't find that you'd like to ask me, feel free. I hope everyone's well, and I look forward to seeing you all in another chat. Bye-bye.